Welcome to the Barnet and Southgate Performing Arts webinar. Um, my name is Alison Cook. I'm the Curriculum Manager for Art Design, Media and Performing Arts, and I'm joined by Anne Armitage. Um, but before we um, introduce you to the course, what we'd like to do is to show you um, a video um, about the provision, and then we'll talk about the courses afterwards. We're offering a level two and a level three uh, provision in performing arts and in our media broadcast and, and games design programmes. Um, a level three um, diploma programme is the equivalent of three A-levels. Um, it's a university entrance level qualification. When you graduate, you will not only have a qualification that can take you onto a degree course, but you will have a CV with some great professional experience, which will put you head and shoulders above the competition. The best thing is that it's vocational is that you can spend those two years expanding your vocational skills. What, what we'll do through that qualification is give, give students a real depth of understanding of both the theoretical elements of performing arts, theatre and the theories that underpin the practice, but also real opportunity to develop their skills in a practical environment. That what's great about coming to, you know, going on a performing arts course and so you great you get great opportunities to meet people, to network, and um, you're in this space, this fabulous space. As part of the development of the Performing Arts Programme in particular, um, we've worked quite closely with Susie Earnshaw Theatre School, um, it, we, who are based in Barnet, just over the road from our, our, our Barnet Wood Street campus. Students will have the opportunity to um, access the facilities at Susie Earnshaw Theatre School and, and at the Ball Theatre there as, as, a, as a professional venue. I'm very excited to be partnering with Barnet and Southgate College and working to create an exciting professional course that will get you on stage from day one. We've got a lot of, a lot of theatre and a lot of television and, and, and film production and music production on, on our doorstep. Doing a performing arts course is really valuable because it just teaches you so many skills. No, not necessarily skills, you know, acting, singing and dancing, yes, amazing, but you leave with so many other social skills. You know, you learn how to, to talk to people in situations like this. You learn how uh, to be yourself as well as being other people. It's beneficial for university interviews, um, college interviews, job interviews, um, being thrown into situations at work where you might have a board meeting or just any any situation in general. There's huge and very genuine opportunities for young people who are trained um, to then go on and into employment, whether that's straight from uh, a programme with us, whether that's through an apprenticeship route or uh, leaving us and going into, into higher education. Several of my graduates and current pupils work professionally in the West End and feature films and I'm so proud of what they're achieving. Added to that, we've also um, uh, secured some partnership with uh, Daisy and Duke's theatrical agency uh, who again will work, you know, for some of our students, giving them representation to, to secure jobs in, in, in the industry through that agency. The skill sets that performing arts gives you uh, as a person, the confidence you gain as a person um, is completely invaluable. We are looking for passionate, driven performers to take advantage of everything this course can offer. It's a fantastic opportunity for young people to take and, and, and already uh, we know that there's a lot of interest in this um, and you know I would encourage anybody who's considering going into this area of work to come and join us at Barnet and Southgate College um, because this is a, it's an exciting environment to be in, it's an exciting time to join that programme and I know that the students who do uh, succeed in gaining a place on our course will have a, a, an outstanding experience and, and will, it will provide them with a real platform to build on for their future. Okay, so we're going to, Amber and I are going to talk about the, the, the courses. Um, so the, 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 the performing arts course is actually designed to introduce the subject, develop skills and knowledge, and then access um, understanding and application. Um, our programme of learning is delivered through specialist project briefs that develop skills, competencies, and talents within the performing arts industry. Yes, so um, it's really in the first year about developing um, the, your performing arts skills and exploring performance styles. So that means um, looking at different methodologies, looking at different genres of uh, within the performing arts and um, uh, developing those sort of techniques 
as an actor, um, um, creating performance material and then performing as an actor to, to the audience. Um, during this term, you also um, develop uh, management of projects, um, individual projects, and um, part of it is uh, self-analysis and reflection in order to sort of set your goals and achieve what you need to do within th that year. Um, we also try to develop an appreciation of the performing arts uh, and the performing arts industry and also their future role within that industry and to, to navigate that pathway um, for, for the future. Um, the second year is very much about um, getting a performing personal performing arts profile together which means that you are developing skills in order to market yourself as a product in terms of higher education uh, and also um, in terms of getting a job within the performing arts industry, um, developing show reels and um, audition techniques and so on and so forth. Um, and the final project is a, a collaborative performing arts project, which means that you take on different roles within a theatre company. Uh, as well as being a performer, so that you become almost like a, a small scale touring theatre or a repertory theatre in, in this instance. Yeah. So. Okay. The, the, all the courses that we run here at Barnet and Southgate College, we call to, and they're made up of four elements. The four elements include performing arts, will be the first one, that will be your main qualification. Um, we have English and maths makes up part of the study programme as well. And that is for students who um, haven't achieved grade four. Um, it is compulsory that they study English and maths with us because that is a, a qualification that they're going to need um, for higher education or employment or just for their CVs for in the future for the jobs. Work experience is um, also one of the elements of the study programme. Um, all of the students that we have within our area have to take part in work experience. Um, that could be people coming in, um, working with the students or students being out in a placement. Um, but it depends on the different areas and performing arts. It could be that they're putting on production. Um, it could be that they're putting on something on at the Bull Theatre where it's for a live audience. But that will be outside of their study programme so that all of these elements are, are hours that they have to um, meet within their study programme. The last thing is pastoral and eats. Um, all of the courses, there will be one-to-one um, -one, um, support with their personal tutors throughout the whole of the year. The students get dedicated um, tutorials with personal tutors, but there is constant feedback throughout the year and always within their, their sessions about how to develop and how to improve. Um, there is workshops that students can take part in. We can have talks and visits where people come in um, and give progression talks. So th this will all be part of the EAPS and the pastoral part of the programme. Um, all of our courses within the area, um, they are designed to enable the learners to progress on to a higher level or the or next level of progression. So within the level three, the natural progression would be to higher education where they will have prepared within what they're doing on the programme, um, a portfolio that then they then use to get them through to higher education, or it could be an apprenticeship or it could be industry. There's lots of different avenues that the students could take, um, but it depends on their interest, and, but they will be helped and nurtured through that to enable them to do that. Um, uh, is there any questions that you would like to um, ask us about the course? Um, the, the level two and the level three are both fantastic um, courses um, that we have within our provision. Um, and it's, it's lovely to see the students that we have. Um, they, they have the sessions over at the Bull Theatre, so they're, they're exposed to a, a, a live commercial environment. So that that's part of their study programme while they're with us. So is there any questions that anybody would like to ask? Well, Alison, we've got one question from Jada. Um, it's, is it possible to take the performing arts course as well as a science A level, such as biology? OK, generally what happens is um, students take the, the performing arts course on its own because it is, um, you know, it's a full study programme um, and, and it's not 
normal for students to take other subjects outside of it. It is three A levels equivalent. Um, there has been occasion with some students on other uh, courses that we have where they've maybe taken one subject, but it's it's not the usual pattern of what happens. There is an expectation that um, within the, the days that they'll be um, studying um, with us, that there is five hours independent study outside of their own timetables. And that is an expectation because uh, with any of the creative courses, it's it's you're doing practical, but there's also the academic element to it as well. So it is, it's, you know, it's a full program within itself. Okay. Uh, one other question from Jada as well. How many hours a week is the performing arts course? Um, the students are in um, for three days. Um, if anybody has to take English and maths, um, then that could be more sessions that they're in, but not everybody within all of our study programs has to do that. It's only if you haven't got the grade four, um, but as I say, anyone who has got three and below, then they would have to do English and maths. That would be compulsory. Um, times vary with each of the courses because they've all got different start times. Not everything is nine to five on a Monday to Friday throughout. Um, but generally you would be looking to be three days in. If you have English and maths, that would be additional. And then when work experience and things like that are also taking place, then that, you know, it will be making up the full package of, of what the study program is. Okay. Uh, I mean, th there's no more questions, but one one we get in um, quite often is um, how do you apply to the course and um, I, was Sorry, gonna I was gonna share my screen and show everyone how to do it okay so uh, yeah go for it Alison okay you can apply online all of the courses are live at this point we are t receiving applications um, for performing arts as we are every other course within the creative industries department. In January, what happens is that we would do um, interviews, but with performing arts, we would be doing auditions. So once you send your application form in, you would then receive information from the customer services. We would have um, specific times and dates that you would come in for an interview, but there would also be an audition that, that takes place. We did the auditions last year over at the Ball Theatre. Um, so that you've had your interview first, but then there would also be a group of students together that they would then um, do an audition as well for this particular program. Okay. So please apply now. Yeah, we're open. We're open for applications, and we so, interview throughout the whole of the year. So if someone wanted to apply to the level three course or the level two, I will put this link in the chat box for everyone. It's the performing arts department page, and you click over here to the full-time course listings here and go into the course page where you can read a bit more um, about what you will study, um, how you'll be assessed and so on. And then you can click apply online here. And once the application is received, then you will be contacted by the um, customer service department. They will, they will also send you out, um, we have like a profile that comes to you as well. So that would just give you some um, some background information yeah. and then I then get all the applications through and then they're distributed to all of the um, interviewing tutors and you will be contacted. Um, we have previously um, what we did because of when it was in lockdown, we were we were interviewing people online um, and that worked really well. Um, but what we're now, obviously, we're back to face to face. So your interviews would be, you know, you'll be invited into the building and then that would be how it's done. We've also got there is an open day tomorrow. Um, so in the afternoon. So, you know, if anybody wanted to come along and have a chat, then, you know, I'm, I will be here and I can talk about performing arts courses as there are other, um, you know, everybody's looking for all of the other um, creative industries courses and other it, it's a college wide open day here at Wood Street Campus. I'll put that link in the chat box as well. Thank you. Chris. So we've got a few more questions. Is there a separate acting course or is it a combined acting, singing and dancing? So with regards to this particular course, it's an acting course. It's mainly an acting course, but there are elements of physical theatre 
and choral work and singing within that. So it may be that we do um, a unit on cabaret, for example, but it's not a dance course and it's not a singing course. It's actors who dance or use physical theatre and who, who may use choral elements or singing within the productions. So it's not musical theatre. One question that follows on from that, how much dance is in the course? Um, so at the moment we're doing a project which is physical theatre, which is very much choreographed. And with this particular um, production that we're doing, it's devising work. So that's in response to our learners. If we have particularly strong performers who are dancers, or we have particularly strong performers who are singers, they will incorporate that into their devising projects. So if they really want to do dance or they really want to do singing, there will be opportunities for them to incorporate that into some of the projects that they do. But it's not taught um, separately in dance classes, if you know what I mean, but it will be coming from the students in their devising process if they want to, if they're strong dancers, for example. Um, yeah. Okay, we've got one question from Denise. Uh, I believe Denise is waiting for a response for an interview. Um, we applied a month ago. Is there um, a person we can put in contact with with Denise? Um, it, it, we've only we've recently had a list of applicants, so we're we're at the moment just putting out um, the, the to the tutors. So Denise, if you haven't heard yet, then. Um, if you've had a response back from um, Deborah um, Fitzu, who is our um, coordinator for the interviews, um, if, if you haven't heard back from her, then please email me because I'm the one that coordinates it. I get all the information in and then collate it and send it to the tutors. Um, we, we, although the ap applications have come in now, we will start interviewing and the process really begins um, in January, once we come back after Christmas. So if you haven't heard back from Deborah Fitzsu, which is our customer service person, please contact me, then I can make sure that that, they're more than happy to do that. Um, one more question from Leslie. We are isolating currently, is, the, is there another open day we can visit? Um, well, the next round of open events are in March next year there's some online materials that I can send you, Leslie, um, that might help you. But does that fit in well, um, Alison, with the interviews um, for the March Open events? What do you mean does that fit in? Like, um, do people need to apply as soon as possible? Can they uh, wait put, until March? Don't wait, don't wait. Put your, I mean, for anyone who's interested in any of our courses, what I say is, Put your applications in now you will be um, contacted um, before January um, that's when we, we start having interviews taking place um, we can send you out the information about the courses um, we can also keep you um, notified of any activities that are taking place within the college whether it's what students work that they're producing um, we have um, what we have since we went into lockdown, we, we did start getting together an online um, um, exhibition of student work. So we, we keep adding to that. So if, if because the open day isn't until March, that doesn't matter. Get in contact with us now because we can still keep sending you information about things that are going on with the college. If there's any questions or anything that you, you know, needed to be answered then you know, we're more than happy to do that. So yeah, please apply now and then we can get stuff sent out to you. Okay, no more questions at the moment. Um, just, wait, just wait another minute or so in case anyone else has any more. Okay. Are there any other... Um, frequently asked questions that that you guys get um the one that has been asked is how many days am i in college um frequently asked is will i need to repeat english and maths mm. as i've said yes that would need to to you would have to um would i need to pay fees for the course um if you have done a level three 
um, in the past um, and you're 19, then fees would apply um, because everybody is entitled to one level three. Um, but if, if, there was, if your um, situation dictated that you, that you wasn't quite sure, then our customer services team will be able to help you with that. Um, people ask about how is the work assessed? Your, where the work is, um, you complete briefs as you go along and each brief will be formatively assessed and then summatively assessed when you completed the unit and then you move on to the next unit. Um, and that's, that's the same um, for all of our courses. And um, I think it's one of the questions that I often get with some of the students is they think that it's a completely practical course. They think that they're just going to be putting on plays, but half of the actual um, course is is theory and is academic. Mm -hmm. um, so you have opportunities to sort of write journals and to do sort of deeper analysis and, and research projects within the performing arts industry. Um, so half of it is practical and half of it is is, is theory. And you must have, you know, this is a three A level equivalent. Mm. So yeah, there is there is the academic side of it which backs up the practical. Mm. Yeah. Well, another question from Leslie: How do I know what level levels to apply to? Um, for level three, you're looking at five fours and above. Um, for level two, it would be. Um, for threes and above, that would be the um, um, it, it's the criteria, the entry criteria. So for a level three, and that's a standard across all of the levels, um, all of the courses within the area, um, it's five um, GCSE grade four and above. Okay. Um, and a passion yeah. for watching specifically. Of course. <laughs> Can we apply without GCC grades yet, or should we use our predicted grades? Um, you can apply. What what happens is with all of the interviews that we take, obviously they're, 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 it's happening before anyone's um, received their, their grades. What we do is we interview, you tell us what your predicted grades are, and then, um, a, you know, pending being offered a, a place that would be conditional on achieving the grade. So that, you know, anybody who we interview that is a condition um, that is applied. Once you get your GCSE grades, um, then students come in and enrol um, in the August period, they bring evidence of their grades and then we put them straight onto the courses. So you, you, it, the interview will, will give you the indication of yes, um, because you will have told us predicted grades. Um, and then it's, it's when those grades come through that that confirms the, the level that you're going on. Are there any work experience opportunities offered from, from the course? Um, within all of our courses, we have work experience opportunities. Um, some students um, find their own. Um, others, it's um, that we actually arrange and put it together. So as I said, it could be that um, we've got the group working with a particular employer link, or they could be doing a performance. It's, it's, I mean, the work experience happens outside the timetabled hours. Um, so it could be that the students decided that they wanted to put their own work experience together. It could be a performance that they've, they've chosen a the venue. They, they organize it, they negotiate it with the venue um, uh, owners. And then they've, they've put that together themselves. So it's, it's them getting themselves seen outside, which is, and, and work experience is crucial to all of our students because it gives them understanding of working with employers, working to deadlines, working together as group, you know, having to problem solve, lots of things that they would need to organize themselves. So it's, it's you know, it's getting them um, ready for the real world, that they are taking ownership of what they're doing, um, that it's it helping them to become independent, um, individual creative people, within all of the areas that they need to work. So yeah, it's, it's really important. And we would also, you know, there, there's with, with speakers and, and, and um, progression talks and things like that, um, that would become part of their eat. So that's not work experience, but it all leads to um, their understanding, their development, their journey with us. And it's all about a journey. So, you know, the expectation is they come in at a starting point and then having 
taken that journey with us. They're, they're learning, they're developing skills, they're problem solving, and it's taking them to a higher place that then allow, you know, helps them for, with progression um, to the areas, the pathways that they want to, to take. Okay, uh, I think just one more. Um... Are applications in January less likely to be accepted? Uh, all applications, it, it's we're, we're interviewing throughout the whole of the year. Do mm. not think that if you leave it, um, you know, any anybody who we speak to in um, January, we will be speaking to people in March, we'll be speaking to people in April. We're talking to students and interviewing students throughout the whole of the year for all of our courses. So, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you haven't got it in now. It, if it came in, in, you know, in February, but we are interviewing throughout the whole of the year. So it's not first come, first serve. It's everybody mm. is interviewed, everybody is processed. You know, there is a conversation, right student, right course, right level. That happens with all of the tutors. Um, you know, some people come in with the, maybe the right qualification, but they, they haven't got those practical skills at that point that may have been developed. So a lower level might be a better option to enable them to um, you know, develop those skills, to put them in so that those fundamental skills that puts them in a really good place for when they want to move up. So it's, it's, it's about the right student, right course. It's, it's, and, and that will happen with a, di a dialogue um, and a conversation when you with the tutors during those interviews. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, please get your applications in and come and meet the team because they're all brilliant. Um, and very supportive towards of all of the students within our area. I think that's it for now. No more questions coming through. Um, I can send an email to everyone tomorrow as well with your details, just in case please. they have any further questions. Yeah, please do. That's... Can I thank everybody um, for, for attending this webinar? It's, it's, I, I hope we receive your applications. It is a fantastic course. Um, and if, if you have booked tomorrow, then we'll look forward to seeing you um, in the open event that's taking place between 3.30 and 6.30 at the Wood Street campus. Um, and yeah, and I hope this has been an informative um, session for you. And, and if, but as uh, Chris says, if there's any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So yeah, please send them along. Thank you, everyone.